హలో వెల్కమ్ టు ఈపీజీ పాఠశాల ఐఎమ్ డాక్టర్ వంశీ కృష్ణారెడ్డి అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆఫ్ ఇంగ్లీష్ ఇండియన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ టెక్నాలజీ తిరుపతి టుడే విల్ డిస్కస్ ఎ మాడ్యూల్ ఆన్ కామిక్స్ కల్చర్ విచ్ ఇస్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ కల్చర్ స్టడీస్ పేపర్ అండ్ దిస్ మాడ్యూల్ ఈజ్ ప్రిపేర్డ్ బై మిస్టర్ కాశీ బాబు హూ ఇస్ అ రిసర్చ్ స్కాలర్ ఎట్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఆఫ్ హైదరాబాద్ లెట్స్ మూవ్ టు అవర్ మాడ్యూల్ కామిక్స్ కల్చర్ what is comics comics is a medium of expression in which the author exploits images text and other visual material to convey what he has to convey in comics artists place a series of visual images alongside of textual devices such as speech and thought bubbles captions and different expressions to carry out their narration artists use cartooning very widely apart from fumetti which literally means a little cloud of smokes artists produce comics in wide variety of forms such as comic strips comic books cartoons graphic novels and comic albums now after looking at what is comics let us look at what is culture so that we understand what is comics culture what is culture culture is popularly defined as the characteristics of a particular group of people with their own language social practices religion food habits music and arts to understand comics culture we should also take a different definition of center for advanced research for language acquisition definition of culture which is a shared patterns of behaviors and interactions cognitive constructs and understandings that are learned by socialization now let's come back to the comics culture comics culture can be defined as a shared identity and practices of not only the artist and publishers involved in comics creation and propagation but also the consumers who enjoy reading or watching those comics however the comics and culture changes from country to country and people to people depends upon the various environments and social conditions now let's look at origins and development of comics when you look at the origins when you look at the history of comics probably comics would trace back to uh, cave paintings trajan's column on in rome egyptian hieroglyph and boyo tapestry here we can look at different comics uh, which are available historically the figure one shows cave painting of dun hers and figure two uh, shows us the trajan's column in in rome and figure three egyptian hieroglyph and figure four which is very popular boyo tapestry now let's look at different traditions uh in comics across the world now let's start with english traditions of comics english traditions is as old as comics are the term comics in english refers to the medium of comics and the comics are divided into three categories the first comic strips the second comic books the third graphic novel the english speaking world refers to the comics of different cultures by the terms used in their original languages manga for japanese comics bandes dessins for french language comics the european tradition has evolved from swiss rudolf toffer from as early as 1827 now let's look at american tradition of comics american tradition has seen its origins in richard f outcalled 1890s newspaper strip called the yellow kid now you can see uh, the comic strip which is published in the yellow kid when you want to look at the history of american tradition of comics that would take us back to the the magazines that contributed to the development of comics include punch judge and life this success spilled on to some other newspapers such as the new york world the new york american which actually published the allocate that you can see 
uh, and early Sunday, which had comic strips, a full length page. Now, after looking at British comics and American comics, let us look at the history of comics in 20th century of America. 20th century newspaper comic strips got widespread public approval with the success of Bud Fisher's Mutt and Jeff in 1907. This is the time uh, where the comics gained huge popularity in America. Unlike British, the American has received the comics and uh, popularized in their newspapers. Comic books began to roll out in the 1930s. The success of Action Comics and its Superman character in 1938 unleashed a golden age for comic books. One probably can remember the Superman as a popular Hollywood figure has originated from comics. And this particular figure is quite popular in contemporary American culture as well. Hence, we probably understand that this Superman figure, heroic figure, has origins in American popular culture. After the Second World War, the popularity of superhero genre began to decline, leading to the proliferation of other genres. Genres such as crime, humor, romance, and horror. Other than the heroic genre, you got new genres into comics to cater to different kind of audience. And especially in American popular culture, the genres such as crime, humor, romance, and horror are quite popular. Hence, comics have taken up these genres and adopted into the comics. The onslaught of these genres led to legislation of comic code to regulate the content. The problem with this content, the problem with these genres are they're explicitly uh, violent and sexist. Hence, they had to be regulated. They had to be censored. Hence, this is the time where a comic code to regulate the comic content has been introduced in America. And these new genres, arrival of new genres, the sense of censor has begun in America. In the early 1960s, the superhero genre regained its popularity, bringing in the underground comics and presenting the readers with adult alternative cultural content in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Hence, the superhero and Superman kind of genre has regained its popularity and gained back its momentum again in 1960s and 70s. And uh, other than superhero content, a uh, lot of comics that has to do with adult alternative cultural content has been introduced during this period. Experimental content was also unleashed in 1980s and later. The graphic novel made inroads into the popular comics culture with Will Eisner creating the term for his work, A Contact with God, in 1978. So far, we have seen the evolution of comics and introduction of different genres into comics. Initially, we have seen how superhero or Superman characters got into comics. Then, with the onslaught of this, and you have different genres getting into the comics, such as horror, uh, romance, humor, and crime. And then, the superhero comics again regained the momentum, and now we have reached a position where a new idea, a new method, a new uh, genre called graphic novel has been introduced in 1980s and late 1980s. And with the work, A Contact with God in 1978. It has become more popular with the success of The Dark Knight Rises, Mouse and Watchmen in the 1980s. So hence, 1980s has witnessed the spread of graphic novels in American popular culture. Now, after reviewing American comic culture, let us go back a bit to British tradition of comics again. Humor periodicals were very popular in the 19th century with periodicals such as the Glasgow, Glasgow Looking Glass, which was in circulation in 1825. It had made a large scale of production of stories told through illustrations. It was published by Jane Watson, a Glasgow lithographic printer with the illustrations done by William Heath. However, 
this particular experiment was short-lived. Though it was quite popular, somehow it could not survive for long. And there are other traditions that we see called Punch or the Lon London Charvery, which was set up in 1841 by Henry Mayhew and engraver Embezzar Landels. They have coined and employed the term called cartoon. Probably we see the, the word cartoon for the first time at this moment. And uh, this particular cartoon was coined by and employed and coined by Henry Mayhew, engraver Embenzer Landels. And it reached its momentum and it has quite become popular in 1940s. However, it declined steeply afterwards and was eventually shut down in 1992. In 20th century, British comics have continued its momentum and its popularity through different publications. One of such publications is the Amalgamated Press, which was founded by a journalist and entrepreneur, Alfred Hamsworth, in 1901. This particular press has brought in a popular style with a sequence of images with text beneath them, including illustrated chips and comic cuts. Probably with this press, we can see little experiments have been done with comics. The comic strips with illustrated chips and comic cuts have been introduced by this publication. In the UK, the other Commonwealth countries, uh, the DC, Thompson created Dandy in 1937, the Biano in 1938 enjoyed a tremendous success with a combined circulation of over 2 million by the middle of last century. Hence, we see a gradual popularity of comics with the arrival of different publications such as the Amalgamated Press and DC Comics. And these comics have propagated the characters including Dennis the Menace, Disparate Dan and the Bass Street Kids have been read by a generation of British schoolboys. With the arrival of these publications, there are a couple of characters, a couple of comic characters have become quite popular in British popular culture. Now, let us look at uh, different traditions of comic culture across Europe. So far, we have covered American traditions of comics and British tradition of comics. Now, let us look at a uh, very important uh, tradition of comics that was uh, quite popular called Franco-Belgian and European comics. Franco-Belgian and European comics began with Francophone Swiss national Rudolf Tuffer. These cartoons were published in newspapers and magazines in the 19th century. In these cartoons, the sp speech balloons made it to the comic strips in Europe with the success of Zig et Puse in 1925. After that, Frank Belgian comics became dominant with The Adventure of Tintin, becoming an iconic work of Franco Belgian comics. Uh, the Adventure of Tintin has become a, a popular uh, uh, character for as, as, as far as children's literature is concerned and it has been uh, adopted by Hollywood and Adventures of Tintin has been quite popular across the world, not just in Franco-Belgian and or European uh, traditions. Uh, even in Europe, comics were thought to be a threat to the culture and literacy. Uh, some critics described them as the sabotage of all art and all literature as none bear up to the slightest serious analysis. With the arrival of these popular comic strips and popular comic characters, there is a sense that this comic uh, culture is uh, threatening a serious literary activity. Hence, it was criticized by the critics uh, and accused of being not so serious. Hence, you understand uh, the importance and the popularity of these comic strips and comic culture at the time. In the 1960s, the expression bands dissonance, which means drawn strips, began to be used in French to imply the medium of comics. With the criticism on comic culture, 
for not being so serious or, and for being so comical and so frivolous. There is a new term that has been employed called ninth art, which was coined uh, by cartoonist to and started drawing comics for mature audience and started addressing adults. Other comics traditions in Franco-Belgian and European comics were popularized by René Gozzini and Albert Anderzo launched a comic magazine called Pilotty in 1959. Their work, The Adventures of Asterix, turned out to be the best-selling comics series in French. The satirical work Harakiri defied censorship laws in the countercultural spirit in the 1960s. Frustrated with censorship laws and editorial interference, some piloty cartoonists launched the Lee Ish Dis Savannis in 1972 with adult only content. This type of content flourished in the 1970s. Even the experimental science fiction of Mayobis and others in Metal Herland made it to the mainstream publishing houses. So far, we have covered American tra traditions in comic culture, British traditions, and other European traditions. Now, let us go back to some of the Asian traditions in comic culture. Let us start with Japanese comics. The origins of Japanese comics can be traced back to the anthropomorphic characters in 12th and 13th century, uh, 17th century Toba and Kyoshi picture books and woodblock prints such as Ukoi E, popular between 17th and 20th centuries. The Japanese comics and cartoons are called manga. The Kyoshi genre employed sequential images, movement lines, and sound effects. Towards the end of the 19th century, Western style satirical cartoons were introduced through illustrated magazines. Then both the Western and Japanese style comics became very popular. After 1890, American style newspaper comics began to be rolled out in Japan. The Zizi manga was launched in Zizi Zimpo newspaper in 1990. In 1902, Rakuten Kizua began the first modern Japanese comic strip. By the 1930s, Japan had serialized comic strips in largely circulated girls and boys magazines. These strips were published, sold as hardback volumes. And uh, we can see uh, uh, a sample of Japanese comics. And these comics are the first, first modern Japanese comic strip by Rakuten Kizuwa. Japanese co comics after the Second World War, the era of modern Japanese comics began with success of serialized comics of Osomu, Suzuka, and comic strips of Cezanne. In the course of next few decades, the genres of comics became diverse. The narratives were first published in the newspapers or magazines in the serial format, and later they were collected into tuck-to-bone format books. At the turn of the 20th century, one-fourth of all literature produced in Japan were comics. Hence, we understand with this popularity, uh, Japan has received comic culture as a mainstream culture and it has given importance in publishing comic, comics as books. Now, let us turn to one of the most interesting comic culture that was available in the Asian continent, that is India. Indian comics have a a very important role in the comics culture tradition of the world. India is a land of multiple languages with millennia of literary history. It also has a long tradition of comic readership and themes relating to religious beliefs and practices. Indian comics, popularly known as Chitrakatha, as part of Indian culture and have been published in English and many Indian languages in the form of comics, series and graphic novels. Folk tales have also been presented in the comic format to children for a long time. Indian comics have always got large publication and the industry reached its zenith in the late 80s and early 90s. At times, each comic was sold over half a million copies during its shelf life. However, they now sell only about 50,000 copies in the same period. Once prosperous comic print industry is declining, on the account of ever-growing television industry, which has become a dominant medium in providing comics. Comic industry is also losing out to the gaming industry.
In the recent times, comics that have got vast distribution networks including Diamond Comics, Tinkle, Raj Comics and Amar Chitra Katha. Well known creators of comics are Uncle Poi, Abhid Surti and Pran Kumar Sharma. The popular comic uh, characters include Chacha Chaudhary, Bahadur, Nagaraj, Super Commando Dhruva, Doga and Detective Mushawala. Anand Pai, popularly known as Uncle Pai, is believed to have launched the India's comic book industry in the 1960s. He serialized Amar Chitra Katha stories from Indian mythology. When you look at the history of comics in India, uh, it goes back to uh, the newspaper revolution and juxtaposition of comics uh, in the newspaper uh, news. The Times of India's comic series Indrajal Comics marked the beginning of India's comic industry in the mid-1960s. The industry was matured later in India than the Western countries. For a long time, comics could reach only the children of well-to-do families. In a sense, comics were initially little elitist. Those who could read English newspapers, could afford to buy comic books, could read comic culture. Let us look at various phases in the evolution of comics in India. The evolution of India's comic industry can be divided into four phases, beginning in the 50s. During the first phase that began in the 50s, uh, which syndicated comic strips such as The Phantom, Mandrake, Flash Gordon, and Rip Kirby were translated into Indian languages and published. And their success led to a large number of publishers trying to the, do the same title, uh, title in India as well. During the second phase that began in the late 1960s, the early 1970s, the Amar Chitra Kada, which literally means immortal pictorial stories, was launched. And this comic has entirely Indian content and the comics with the indigenous content, themes, and audience counter the Western superhero comics in the market. When you look at Indian comics, Amar Chitra Katha has a very important role in comics culture in India. It has differed from the popular Western comic culture and it has brought to the Indian roots, which has stories rooted in Indian mythology, Indian culture, various stories that are brought from Amar Chitra Katha and reach the Indians instantly. During the third wave of comics that began in the early 80s, the comic composers and publishers tried to cash in on the popularity of superhero genre in the West. In a sense, comic, culture, comic writers have tried to follow the Western genre and try to bank on superhero comics. But Bethal the Great, one of the earliest superheroes in India, was created by Narayan Devnath in 1960 itself. Around 5.5 million copies of comics such as Heroes of Faith were sold in India. Many publishers began to bring out such comics in huge numbers every month. This was the golden period for Indian comic industry in the print arena. However, this trend began to dissipate in the late 1990s in India with the advent of internet television and other modes of entertainment. In a sense, television industry, gaming industry and internet, arrival of internet has posed an immense challenge to comic culture in this country. The children are drawn immensely to the new technologies, hence comic culture has to reinvent itself and use internet to propagate its traditions. But publishers such as Raj Comics and Diamond Comics with established comic series Amar Chitra Katha and Supandi managed to keep their readership despite of onslaught of internet and television industry. Slowly, new publishing houses such as Virgin Comic, Fennel Comics and Green Gold have begun to revive the industry in the last few years and, uh, and started surviving. However, critics are of the opinion that Indian comic industry lacks innovation in the face of digital competition. During the last phase that began in early 2000, uh, we have uh, something called web comics, which is very, very interesting phenomena in Indian comic culture. It began to make inroads into the Indian market. It has been phenomenal success as they reach a wide range of audience for free. It plays an important role in spreading awareness among the people about such social issues such as 
politics, social reform, feminism, and it enjoys a wider reach because of the spread of social media such as Facebook and Twitter. Finally, India is also in forefront in supporting and sustaining the comic industry. It hosted its first ever comic convention in the February 2011. As per an estimate made in 2012, India's comic industry was worth over $100 million. Let us look at different forms and formats of comic culture. Comic strips are usually short and brought about in multiple panel format. Multi-panel format are mostly used in newspapers. In the US, daily comics are usually printed in a single tire while Sunday comics are in multiple tires. In the early part of last century, daily comics were in black and white print and Sunday comics in color and often occupied a full page. Since Sunday uh, is a time where people, it attracts most readership, hence they experimented with a color comic strips. Formats for specialized comics periodicals differ from culture to culture. Comic books are thin periodicals published in colors. They mostly comprise an American format. European and Japanese comics are often printed in serial format in magazines and newspapers on daily, weekly, or monthly basis. Usually in Japan, there are in black and white print come as weeklies. The comic books here run into hundreds of pages. Whereas European book length comics are mostly printed in A4 size format in color. In English speaking countries, the trade paperback format which is used for a collected comic books is also used for virginal work. And the bound volumes of comics are termed as graphic novels even though the title has the term novel, which is usually used to refer to fiction, graphic novels also have a non-fiction content and are collections of short works. Japanese comics are published in volumes named Tank Bone. Gags and editorial cartoons have single panels and often with a caption or speech balloon. The editorial cartoons are little different from uh, other comics, uh, which are these editorial cartoons are serious in nature and are meant to uh, meant for political messaging. However, gags and editorial cartoons are not usually included in the comics genre by those who stress on the sequence as indispensable feature of a comic. They are put under combination of word and image. Gag cartoon flourished first in Europe in the 18th and 19th centuries and term cartoon first used in 1843 to refer to gags published in the British humor magazine Punch. And to look at different forms and formats, especially like web comics, the latest genre called web comics has begun to dominate the humor industry online. They can reach a large number of and variety of audience and they can also be accessed by new readers from archives which is not easy possibility in case of printed comic. The artist in case of web comics can explore an infinite canvas, canvas which means they are not constrained by size or the dimensions of the page. When it comes to web comics, the web comics writers have a unique opportunity to experiment with different technologies, different contents because it has it is used widely in internet. Hence, they are more free and more independent in experimenting with their comics. Some consider even storyboards and wordless novels to be comics. Film studios, especially those in animation industry, often use a sequence of images as guides for movie sequences. These storyboards are not intended to be the end of end product or not often seen by the public. The new genre called wordless novels, on the other hand, use a sequence of captionless images to make a narrative. And these new comics is spreading across different cultures. Comic culture has a great impact on motion picture. However, the motion picture is late in adapting the comic genre and the issues that comics have dealt with. Natalie Hens, in her article titled Why Comic Books Are More Radical Than You Think, argues that comic books have influenced Hollywood and are decades ahead of it dealing with issues of race, gender, and sexuality. Many comic book movies are far behind the comics that inspired them, she observes. For instance, the character called Wonder Woman, who will figure in Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice to be released in 2016, which is released in 2016, has been almost 
continually in print in the comics genre for more than 70 years. Let us look at the uh, comics culture spread into different new terrains and new countries such as even Bangladesh which is witnessing a huge popularity and surge in the popularity of comic culture. And uh, the reader base has been expanding in this country. From a situation where it was almost impossible to survive in 80s and 90s, the country has moved to a situation where people in this comic industry can make a career for themselves. Earlier, Bangladeshis used to bring comic books from Western publishers such as DC, Marvel, Icon, and Vertigo. Now they have publishers of their own. At this moment, they are publishing around with 10 titles. Apart from Bangladesh, the comic culture tradition has very fast spreading to African subcontinent as well. This spread is also visible in Nigeria, where a startup comic republic based in Lagos is creating a plethora of superheroes for not only African readership, but also black readers around the world. The characters include the Guardian Prime, a 25-year-old Nigerian fashion designer by profession who strives to build a better Nigeria. Hilda Avanime Moses, a remote village woman in Edo state who can see spirits. The other character, Marcus Zigo, a privileged but angry teenager who can move at supersonic speeds. These characters have become quite popular among black readers and in African continent. In this module, we have covered right from different traditions of comic cultures such as American, British, European, Franco-Belgian, Indian, Japanese, and African and other comic cultures. And we have also discussed the origins and evolution of comic culture and various forms and formats that have been introduced and popularized by different authors and publishing houses. For further details, one can look at the complete e-text and can look up to the references that are available in the e-text. And uh, you can also visit EPG Patshala website for further information. Thank you.